Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. My name is Nick, and in this video, I wanna walk you through the polar alignment process using the ASI Air. And this is gonna be good for the original, also the Pro, and the latest Plus model as well. I've already got my scope set up. Uh, you may have seen in my full setup video, the way I level the mount, and you can see where that uh, is especially useful when we're trying to get uh, polar aligned, and we're only moving the mount on one axis and not two at one time when we're uh, attempting to do that. I've also got the camera cooling and everything's all set. I've definitely got connection to the ASIR app through uh, the, the onboard Wi-Fi that's on there. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do here in the app is go over to the right-hand side where you can see the word preview. And I'm gonna tap that and that brings up our list of options of some of the functionality that's in here, the different processes that you can go through. We've got focus, and the second one, PA, is polar alignment. So I'm going to tap there. And then we have, this is for North Celestial Pole alignment. There's also the All Sky Polar Aligned, which I've covered a little bit, had a first impressions look at in another video. Uh, that is currently still in, a, uh, in an experimental mode. But once it's a full feature of the ASAR, I hope you do a full walkthrough and uh, a full look at just how accurate it is uh, without being able to see Polaris for polar alignment. But in this case, we've got the front leg of the tripod facing north, we've got it leveled and everything, and uh, now we're gonna use Polaris for our polar alignment. So, scope is set up and mount as shown. Uh, this little diagram here showing that it's uh, pointed toward the North Celestial Pole. We've connected the main camera and the mount. In fact, at the top of the screen here, you can see the camera menu. The main camera is our ASI 1600MM Pro, and the mount is the iOptron 740, and those are both connected. Now, we've got exposures and the bin setting uh, set here. I've actually got polar line. Uh, this is at bin two. I've got a hydrogen alpha filter, so this just helps a few more of the stars come through. It's gonna be helpful for star counts uh, during plate solving as well. So, let's go ahead and hit play. This is gonna shoot a three second exposure. And it's loading that image. It's detecting the stars and solve. Very quick, took 1.8 seconds to solve. So basically that's taking a picture of the sky and figuring out exactly where the mount is pointed. Now what it's gonna do is rotate the RA axis. That's the right ascension axis. So that's sort of the, roughly the east-west value in the sky. Uh, it's gonna rotate this axis by 60 degrees. Now, as you get used to your mount, kind of knowing which way it's gonna go and uh, kind of where you need uh, to be clear of when it happens is a little bit important. So let's go ahead and hit next, and that'll rotate. Now, I did also balance the scope. I would mentioned before in my other video just how important good balance is for guiding. A good polar alignment and a good balance of the scope is gonna be pretty critical. So I've done that well before I did any of this uh, step. So it's shooting another exposure here. And it's plate solving that. And now it's calculated. So what that means is between those two images of essentially the same part of the sky, that rotation there, it was able to figure out exactly where the axis of rotation is pointed in the sky and how far off of that is, that is from essentially Polaris, but really the North Celestial Pole, where the north axis of the Earth is pointed. So it's calculated that, and down at the bottom here, we're gonna hit, let's go. Now on the right-hand side here, you can see just how far off it is. So we're a little bit low, we're almost a full degree low. And we can see here, we're just a little bit to the side. So we need to adjust the knobs uh, here on the mount. Now the way my mount works is I've got uh, this little hex key that I'm able to loosen a couple of bolts here to make this adjustment easier. So I just loosen those just barely, just so they're loose enough to be able to move. And then I'll be retightening those at the end of the process. And with these knobs, I basically have one to turn on the left side and one to turn on the right side. Those are the azimuth adjustments. So going parallel to the horizon. And then we also have the altitude uh, in the sky. This is also really setting your latitude on Earth. So when you first use your mount, or maybe you change location, you want to make sure that your uh, latitude is set reasonably close. Otherwise, you're going to be way off. You might be five degrees off or something, or even worse, 
and it'll just take a little bit closer, a little bit longer to get close to uh, polar alignment. So now let's make our first adjustment. So I'm gonna take care of this left to right offset first. So when you first are adjusting your knobs, you may need to learn kind of which one makes the mount go which way. But on my mount, I know that if I'm offset, uh, I'm to the left of the center part of the reticle here. I need to tighten this knob on the left in order to push the mount in the right direction. So I'm gonna do that here and give it a couple turns. And you also need to learn just how many turns it takes to go, you know, say 10 arc minutes or something like that. It eventually gets very delicate. And in fact, this mount, the SEM40 is uh, maybe not quite as good on the very fine adjustments as I'd like. Uh, you can just barely nudge it a bit and it'll uh, be moving quite a bit uh, as we get closer to the alignment. Now I'm also gonna go up. Now one thing I've found with this mount at least is that I always wanna be approaching uh, from the bottom. It's working against the weight of the, the scope and the counterweights above it. So I'm having to, to push into it. If I'm lessening where the scope is pointed in the sky from lowering that, it actually turns too easily. It's, it's too eager to kind of let the weight of the scope down. So I always try and be below it and then work up from there. So in this case, I'm already there. So I'm going to be turning this, in this case, counterclockwise, uh, looking down on that. So now at the very bottom here, we can hit refresh. So it's going to shoot another frame and then plate solve there. And it's going to see how much closer we are to Celestial Pole. Okay, so we've uh, just about halved our offset uh, in the altitude, uh, but we've overshot just slightly on the azimuth. So I'm gonna uh, adjust that back a bit. You might also notice that the clock is counting down or counting up there, we're over five minutes already. This generally takes me about five minutes, maybe a little bit less, depending on how accurate I wanna be that night. Making a few adjustments here, let's try and get close. But really, uh, it, it does give you a ranking as far as other ASI Air users, but you're pretty much just uh, working against your own clock and there's certainly no rush. A good polar alignment is very important. Okay, so a little bit more of an adjustment in that same direction I was just going on both sides. So a little bit far to the right, let's adjust that. And then we need to do some adjustment from the bottom. Now you can see this outer circle here is one degree. And then within here is two minutes of arc. And we really wanna get within that two minutes. That's gonna be good enough. And then we'll see how far we get within that. And refreshing again. Excellent. So now we're at 12 arc seconds. And that is quite close enough, quite honestly. I might just tweak it slightly to see if we can get a little bit closer on the azimuth. Let's hit refresh. And yeah, we overshot just slightly. We're still at 12 arc seconds. I'm going to call that good enough. So what I'm going to do here on my mount is I'm going to tighten in these bolts and then also take out that hex key as well and re-tighten, kind of lock in where the mount is pointed. Now that can shift it just slightly. Uh, I was very gentle there. Let's see if I was gentle enough. So now to 23. 23 is honestly still good enough. So I'm gonna be quite happy with that. So I'm gonna hit finish now here down at the bottom. And saying congratulations. It's calculating my global rank. So global ranking there of, uh, yeah, not very great. Only defeated about a fifth of ASI Air users, but that's okay. I wanted to take you along for the ride as well. So you can see step-by-step step how this is done. At this point, uh, the polar line is done, but the one thing I do want to mention is that I go into the mount settings here and scroll, uh, I'm already down at the bottom here, so you scroll down all the way to the bottom, 
I'm going to go to this go to home position and hit start and I'll hit OK. That's going to return the scope to its home position. I always find that to be necessary in order to get the mount uh, to know exactly where it is in the sky. I found a couple times if I try and slew to an object right from that 60 degree rotation, the mount may not quite know where it is and it might slew itself into a leg of the tripod or something like that. So I like to be nice and safe here. And then when slewing to my first target, uh, keep an eye on it and make sure it's going in the right direction. So a quick overview there of the polar alignment process for the ASIR. I hope that was a useful video for you. If it was, definitely do give it a like. That's going to help others find it as well. The ASIR is a really fantastic tool helping to simplify uh, the astrophotography process. It's still a very complicated hobby, but uh, the ASIR definitely helps out in that. So I'm using it each and every time that I'm out with it. If you haven't subscribed yet to Windy City Astrophotography, definitely do that. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time. Clear skies.